Hello everyone, Pro Drum Tech Kenny Sheritz here at White Room Studios in Austin, Texas, where we're trucking drums for the Band of the Sun. Now we're getting the room felt out, and before we get to full tracking, we want to work on one of Sebastian Cure, the owner and main engineer here at White Room Studios in Austin, Texas, an idea that he had using some pin tech triggers which have very very supple curves and are very reflexive and uh, responsive to a drum signal and actually re like reflecting what it's like to really sound like a drum and feel like a drum and play like a drum i love these pin tech triggers and use them to create a unique supple signal that goes into a preamp channel that we then run through a software gate and then into the steve slate triggering system it's a drum system that is off the chain and is levering what we got going on here with these triggers so let's take a look at what we got going on. All right, first we got a D drum trigger conversion from Pintech. They did these up for me. They had the replaceable trigger. You can actually just pop it in and pop it out if a trigger goes bad. And all these Pintech triggers are super durable and last a long time. They do go out. And so you, if they go out the last minute, you don't want to have to whip out a soldering iron. You got the little pre-plug on it, just like you got on this bass drum trigger perfect bass drum trigger over here it's got a replaceable trigger that's easy to pop in and out and what i love about this trigger for this situation is this trigger perfect has got an attenuation pop that allows you to control the sensitivity of your trigger signal now if you listen to the trigger signal you will hear that it's more than or less just a little electronic kind of crunch and uh, what you want to do is you want to get a good solid crunch but that still has a supple curve to it a nice tone of buzziness and the beautiful thing about this is you can kind of ride that line right between here to get that signal line. you get up in here you're getting too much of buzz and your software system will not enjoy it but if you come right in here and get that simple, simple signal you should get a nice non double triggering buzz that you can use as your signal to go in here now we're running this one out of a quarter inch into a countryman that Patrick's holding from of the sun. We're running it straight into the instrument in, XLR out, and pick up pattern on this side, and you got that little ground there in case you get too much hum. Running it straight to the wall, and while you may get a little bit of lag, you won't have too much problem with recording the signal, and it should flow right up to your drum tracks. So let's go ahead and record some drums and let you hear what these Pintech uh, drum triggers are sounding like. I can even feel the organic response of the trigger in what I'm doing and how I'm playing and it's affecting how I actually respond to the drum, which is what you want. You want that full flow of your playing to interact with the drums. So let's go look at the software side of it in the mixing room. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff up close. All right, here's some up close shots that we have of the dynamite uh, gates that we're using. And here we're using the Steve Slate drums up there. Now, Sebastian, why don't you go ahead and fire it? And let's see what these sound like with the samples firing. Now, let's pull the samples out for a moment. And run. Now, we got a ribbon mic, a bass drum mic, and a snare mic. That is it. Let's go ahead and drop those samples back in. Yeah, baby. Now you see how it brightens up the mix, gives it a fat, natural sound, but you're not getting any machine gun activity. Yeah, man, I can even feel the <laughs> <laughs> And so that's my whole point. We want to get a nice, smooth reaction from the signal I'm using the gates and the Pintech triggers allowed us to get a very natural signal without using any MIDI interface, which is not only a great studio trick if you don't have a MIDI interface, but it's also a very natural way to record the kit for sampling. 